What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we're going to be reviewing the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master. Let's get right into it. Onto the physical traits of this lens. This is the smallest 1.4 lens with AF that I've tested, and it's pretty light too, coming in at only 445 grams. It has a common filter thread size of 67mm, which is really nice. It has a declickable aperture ring, which is super nice for all you video people out there. Plus, it makes the lens look really good. It also features an AF-MF switch, which is always nice to have so you can just quickly switch on the lens itself instead of having to go through the menus. It also has a custom button on the side, which is always nice to have. This lens is weather sealed, so you can rest easy. On to the IAF test. This lens performs exactly how you'd expect a lens of this caliber to perform. Amazing. The IAF picks up the eye when it's in range and sticks to it like glue. Like most wide-angle lenses, this isn't going to pick up the eye if your subject is decently far away. They have to be filling up the majority of the frame for it to lock on, but once your subject is within range, this thing performs beautifully. On to the video AF test. I was a bit surprised to find that this lens was a bit slower to focus on a moving subject than I had anticipated. It had difficulty tracking the subject as she ran towards the camera, and was only able to focus on her once she had come to a stop. Even the focus rack back to the background was a bit slower than anticipated. What I will say, however, is that this is probably the smoothest rack I've seen on any Sony lens. No jitter, no stutter, no in and out, just pure smoothness. When Pretty comes back into the frame, it again takes a little bit until it focuses on her face, but it does so very smoothly. This is a theme throughout the AF test. Slower than expected, but focuses very smoothly. I can forgive the lack of speed a little bit for this smoothness, but for what you're paying for for this lens, I really do wish it was a little bit faster to focus in video mode. As Pretty starts to backpedal away from the camera, the focus tracks better, but at that wide of an angle, once she's not directly in front of the frame, everything is in focus because of the focal length. This lens is also the perfect focal length for vlogging. It's very flattering, it's a great size on the body of the camera for vlogging. It's inconspicuous, it's light enough, and it pairs very well, and it looks great, especially with that shallow depth of field. I'm at 2.8 right now because it's super sunny, but if you wanted to, you could vlog at 1.4, which is great. Not only is this lens great for vlogging, but it's an amazing gimbal lens. Because of its small size, wide aperture, and optical performance, it might be the perfect gimbal lens. It's easy to balance on pretty much any gimbal, and it's going to give you really good results. This lens also handles flaring absolutely beautifully. Here are a couple photos I took on the 24mm, and we're actually going to delve into this a little bit deeper in a second. Alright, so this first image we have here is of my friend Calvin. If we zoom in all the way to his face, you can see that it's pretty sharp, it's really really good. It's a little bit grainy because we were shooting in a dark location, but there's good hair detail here, there's good eyebrow detail, eyelash detail, his eyes in focus. Everything looks really really good, and this little bit of grain is more common on wider angle lenses, especially when zoomed in that much, as far as I have found. And so I'm not worried about that whatsoever at all. Um, if we go out to the corner here, you can see that there's a lot of detail in the red here. Again, it's a little bit noisy because we were shooting in the shadow, so I brought it up a little bit. But that's to be expected. Corner detail seems pretty sharp to me. I'm not worried about that whatsoever. And you can see how sharp this lens is with the detail in the chair slash stool that he's sitting on. A lot of texture detail in there. It looks really, really good. You're not getting that on a dull lens, so that's really nice to see. If we move up over here, you can see the bokeh in the background. It looks very clean, but is not perfectly circular. And I think that might be just because of the edges, but I also have a feeling that it's not just on the edges, but it does look fairly clean and fairly consistent. Here, the sharpness of the table is looking very, very clean all the way out to the edge. If we zoom in a lot, you can see a tad bit of fringing up here with a purple and magenta and down here. And then as we scroll to the right, you see a little bit of green fringing um, on the table here. Very minor, unless you're pixel peeping and zooming in past <laughs> one to one, you're not going to notice anything. So that's, that's really good. Uh, again, the, the background here, pretty busy with this uh, fence, but the bokeh looks pretty clean again. Doesn't look perfectly circular, and that is very obvious when you look back up at these lights up top. And you have a little bit of a cat-eyed 
ovalish thing going, but it does look fairly consistent, fairly clean. I'm not too worried about that. That's something that's pretty common on most Sony lenses. Very few of them are gonna give you perfectly circular bokeh, especially when not directly in the center of the frame. So now that we've done that image, we're going to go over to this image. And again, we're gonna zoom into the eyes of my friend Pretty. Sharp eyes, very sharp, everything's looking good. We got some good skin detail here. Not as much detail as say like in 85 millimeter, but again, this is a wide angle lens. It's not meant to be up in your face like that. So we're getting a good amount of detail in the face and texture and eyes. And if we go to the corners up again, for me, it looks like the corner sharpness and detail is very, very good. I'm not worried about that. Does, there doesn't seem to be a massive fall off in the corners when it comes to photo. And we can see that more here. This antenna of the Wi-Fi connector, it looks very, very sharp. Nothing seems like it's losing a lot of detail in the corners here. But on this antenna and on the background of this white cabinet, you start to see that green fringing come up a little bit more. And that is a little bit unfortunate. But again, it's very controlled and it's very minor. If you weren't looking for it, you're not going to find it. It's nothing that I would be too worried about. I've seen lenses with much more chromatic aberration than this, and I think that this is controlled very, very well, and no one's really gonna notice, and you can fix it with lens corrections if you so wish. So that's not something that I would be worried about. This is not a deal breaker in any way. This is done very, very well, and Sony did a very good job controlling the chromatic aberration on this. What I will say here, also what Sony did a very good job on, if we remove the lens corrections, this lens has a very little amount of distortion, which is really, really impressive. Just a little tiny bit of distortion, which on this wide of a lens is fairly impressive. And in the center, there's almost no difference whatsoever. It's, it's more so on the edges and it's just very minor. So I'm very impressed of how controlled Sony kept this lens when it comes to chromatic aberration as well as lens corrections. So overall, what are my thoughts on this lens? It's sharp, light, compact, and honestly, one of the best lenses made for Sony cameras. I've had the opportunity to test out quite a few of Sony's lenses, and usually when I test out these lenses, I don't really see myself buying them at the end of testing them out, because they don't really fit into the way I like to shoot. But the 24mm, that's something special. I would actually consider buying this lens in the not so distant future. I definitely use it for video and throw it on a gimbal and that's what I've been doing for the past week. But I'd also use it for photography. I'd use it for travel photography, environmental portraits, landscapes, everything. This is like a good everyday lens to have. I think it's very similar to the 35mm, which I love to use for everyday use, almost good in every situation. I think for photos, I'd still prefer a 35mm, especially my Sigma 1.4. It just I like that 35mm focal length, especially more for portraits. The distortion is just a little bit less and it's very flattering. I really like that 35mm for photo, but for video, I'd actually prefer the 24mm. This lens comes in at $1,400, and although expensive, it's one of the more affordable G Master lenses, and I think it's pretty fairly priced considering its compactness, its feature set, and its performance. I want to know if you guys are thinking about buying this lens, or if you already own this lens. Let me know in the comment section down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. My name has been Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.